What's good? What's good? What's good, fam? IOBA. I'm TC. So check it. Yesterday, I got a chance to listen to Bernie Sanders, Monkey Ass, on The Breakfast Club. Now, if you get a chance, go to The Breakfast Club YouTube page, check out the interview. But, here's my take on the shit. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Now, in 2016, I may have spoke on this before, but in 2016, I um, I kind of supported the dude. I thought they was fucking him over because everybody was, you know, pushing that Hillary Clinton shit. And then when Hillary Clinton turned out to be the, the Democratic nominee, I couldn't vote for either Dem- either either um, Democrat or Republican. I couldn't vote for Hillary. And I couldn't vote for Trump. So I did like a lot of a lot of black people did. I stayed the fuck home. People got pissed off at us for doing that. You know, they Roland Martin and all the motherfucking dudes calling us all out our name and talking about how we uh, are the reason Donald Trump got elected. And you know what? The truth of the matter is, as I said before, we are the reason Donald Trump got elected because we stayed the fuck home and we control in elections. See, but the Democrats don't seem to understand that. They still on that benign neglect policy. All right? They still on that listen to the motherfucking niggas, um, sympathize with them and empathize with them, but don't promise them anything. Don't promise them a motherfucking thing. Yeah, you right. Yeah, you this. Yeah, you that. And just nod, you know, and, and give a bunch of fucking platitudes and then just walk the fuck off. That's what he did. Because Charlemagne the God, Charlemagne the God been hitting these motherfuckers with the question. You know, do you have a black agenda? And if so, what is it? Now, he claimed, yes, I have a black agenda, and this is what it is. And he started talking the same old prison reform um shit and this legalization of marijuana shit and this a rising tide lifts all boats shit. But let me do this for you real quick. If you got two motherfucking glasses of water, one got, you know, one ten full and the other one is all the way full, and you take them two glasses of water and you raise them up on a motherfucking platform and that platform is at the same level, you still got one goddamn glass ten times more full than the other. They're just sitting up on a higher level. Y'all feel me? So, that's pretty much what Bernie Sanders said. And then when he got to the part about, in other words, he, he talking shit about helping all poor people, and it's going to disproportionately help black people. You know what? They kill me the way they answer these questions, though. Him, Kamala Harris, and Cory Booker all answer the question the same way. First, you ask them the question. Then they start running down shit we already know about how much better off everybody else is than black people and how we've been getting fucked over. That's just to kill time. You know, because you only got like a few minutes, maybe two minutes, three minutes to answer the fucking question. They spend two-thirds of that repeating back to you the question that you just asked them. And then they come with this canned fucking answer about helping all poor people and it's going to disproportionately affect black people. That's that same bullshit they always do. That's the fucking tactic they use. That's what he did. And then Charlemagne asked him about the reparations. He didn't even want to talk about the motherfucking reparations. Matter of fact, he shut the whole fucking question down. You know, I mean, because Charlemagne was pressing him on it. And he just fucking shut the whole question down. Like, he didn't want to talk about it no more. You know. But it's all fine and dandy. And nobody will ask this question. But it's all fine and dandy when, you know, the Holocaust victims are paid reparations. And everybody else... The Indians, the Japanese, everybody else has paid fucking reparations. We, everybody talks about this all the time, too. But the politicians can't find their way. They can't find it in their fucking mind to accept the fact that black people 
are owed reparations. And I'm not talking about reparations from 16, uh, 1865 forward. I'm talking about reparations from, what, the 1500s all the way till now. Because you're talking about trillions of fucking dollars, and they know that. But they just can't get their mind around rap, uh, they can't wrap their mind around bringing black people up to the level economically and socially as everybody else. There has to be a fucking underclass and that and that position is reserved for black people in the eyes of these politicians. And everybody seems all of these motherfucking people seem to be fine with that. And it's just unacceptable. So that's the way the conversation went on the Breakfast Club with Bernie Sanders. So with that, I'm just going to say this. You might as well get ready for four more years of Donald Trump or a motherfucker just like Donald Trump because the Democrats ain't going to win. They're not going to win without that black vote because, check it, the Democrats and the Republicans are pretty much evenly split and the Hispanics are pretty much evenly split feel me? So they need another voting block in order to swing this shit one way or the other. And as we demonstrated in 2016, without the black people, the, the Republicans are going to just take the House again, or uh, take the White House again. And they'll probably take the fucking Congress again too, but they're definitely going to take the uh, White House if, they, if, if one of these motherfuckers don't step up and start trying to really get black people on their side. And they just don't seem to give a fuck. They just don't see that. Or they just acting like they don't hear what we're saying. You ask these motherfuckers, are you going to do anything specifically for black people? They'll say no. Because they scared they're going to alienate their white voters. And like I said before, they don't give a flying fuck about alienating their black voters. Because they really think they can win without us. But they can't. They can't. So, me, I'm prepared to sit. I don't give a fuck. I sit out. But there ain't no way in the fuck they're going to get around this reparations issue. And I don't give a fuck if it take 20 years. I don't give a fuck if it take 100 years. We're going to keep sticking it in their face until they fucking understand it. Until they understand it. And for all you motherfucking... Oh, I... I, I I got to keep hammering this, just like if we're going to keep hammering this. And I got to keep hammering this. You motherfucking immigrants, black immigrants from Africa and the Caribbean and other places around the world, dig into your own history. Because if you don't know, the Africans have gone after the Europeans for, re for redress and reparations. And the Caribbean nations, CARICOM, CARICOM, yeah, Caribbean community, CARICOM nations, they have a real organization, and they're seeking reparations they own themselves. So. <clears throat> a lot of Caribbeans don't know this. They're too busy over here trying to, trying, to, trying to sabotage our movement, the ADOS movement. They're over here trying to do that. They need to take care of their own fucking business. Like I've been saying and like everybody else been saying and like we're going to keep motherfucking saying. It's just that simple. Like I said, a little bit of divisiveness, a little bit of divisiveness is called for right now. And that's it for now, y'all. I'll catch y'all on the next one. TC, and I'm out.